In this video, we discuss how the chemical potential of a gas changes with concentration. Now, the just justification for this video is that we are trying to understand the thermodynamic properties of mixtures. In particular, we are interest interested in understanding the stability of mixtures. And of course, the stability, if you're working at uh, conditions of constant pressure and constant temperature, is provided by the Gibbs energy, right? So what we actually have to do is, is suppose that you have a mixture of maybe two gases and you want to calculate what the total Gibbs energy of the mixture is, uh, we have to uh, be able to uh, define that using partial molar quantities, which is something that we have done in the pr uh, prior videos. Okay, and the question then is, well, how do you obtain these uh, partial molar Gibbs energies, okay, for the components. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is, is redefine these uh, partial molar Gibbs energies and call them chemical potentials. They are exactly the same thing, right? So notice that the total Gibbs energy of a mixture is just the chemical potential of A multiplied by the number of moles of A plus the chemical potential of B multiplied by the number of moles of B. Again, this would be for a binary mixture of only two components, of course, binary, A and B. Okay, and again, these chemical potentials are just the molar gives uh, energies of those components. Now, something that we have seen that is really important uh, in a prior video is that these partial molar quantities, these chemical potentials, depend on the concentration. Okay, so they vary with concentration. The question is whether we can use thermodynamics to find out an analytic expression for that variation of the chemical potential on concentration. All right, so uh, we're going to say that yes, that can be done, and we're going to start with the simplest possible case, which is ideal gases, right? So, so that's always a good starting point. Right, so the question is to figure out how the uh, more deep synergy of a gas changes with concentration. Remember that uh, concentration in gases can be conveniently expressed in terms of partial pressures, okay? So, so the question that we're going to answer in this video is how does the chemical potential of a gas change with the partial pressure of that gas? Okay, intuitively, what we expect to find is that if you have a large partial pressure, then the chemical potential should be really large. Right? And if you have a very small partial pressure, almost no amount of that gas present in that mixture, then your chemical potential, your ability to elicit a chemical change will be quite low. Okay, so, so that's something that we expect to find. The question is, how does that vari a variation of the chemical potential and pressure really take place? Okay, so again, what we're trying to do here is find out how the chemical potential of a species J depends on the partial pressure of J. But again, remember that this is simply the uh, molar Gibbs energy of J, and we actually know quite well how the molar Gibbs energy of a, substance, or so of a substance depends on pressure. That's something that we actually have studied earlier. Remember that uh, the variation of the molar Gibbs energy with pressure for a given sub substance, pure substance, uh, under conditions of constant temperature, was simply equal to the molar volume of that substance. Okay, or in other words, we actually can integrate that expression and find out that uh, differential of Gm is equal to the molar volume uh, differential of pressure. And now we can integrate this for an ideal gas to find out that delta Gm is going to be equal to the integral of the molar volume differential of P but of course, for uh, an ideal gas, this is simply RT over P, right? So that integral is going to just be the integral of RT differential of P over P. That is simply RT natural log of P2 over P1. Okay, and again, I'm going quickly through this because this is something that we have already studied before. Okay. So then what we can say is, is we can unfold this change in the uh, molar Gibbs energy to say, well, the molar Gibbs energy at a pressure P2 minus the molar Gibbs energy at a pressure P1 is equal to RT natural log of P2 over P1. 
Okay, so, so again, that's something that we have seen. Or you can say, well, uh, what I can do here is simply solve for the Moore Gibbs energy at a pressure P2, and this is how uh, this is going to look like. Okay, okay, great, that's, that's no problem. Again, uh, uh, this looks just fine. But of course, what we uh, do now is rename these Moore Gibbs energies as simply chemical potential. Okay, so there's going to be the chemical potential at uh, a pressure P2 is equal to the chemical potential at a pressure P1. Okay, so actually this tells you how the chemical potential changes with pressure. Okay, and notice that if you increase that uh, partial pressure a lot, then the chemical potential is going to grow up, which is something that, that uh, you expect to find. Now, we're going to reformulate this a little bit uh, by putting here a couple of, of uh, simple changes, right, which should be quite easy to explain. For one, we can simply assume that P1 is just one bar. Okay? Uh, again, notice that we're interested in, in calculating how the chemical potential uh, is at a pressure P2, and this equation is just telling you, well, you need to know what the chemical potential is at a pressure P1, uh, uh, and if you know that, then I can calculate or I can provide what the chemical potential would be at a different pressure. But, but this pressure 1 is some, it should be a reference. Well, so our reference is simply going to be 1 bar. And of course, notice that that is the pressure of the standard state. So we're simply going to call this P standard. Okay, that's uh, our P sub 1. Okay, so then uh, the way that this changes is that this is the ke chemical potential at 1 bar which is the same thing as the chemical potential at the standard state. New subscript, uh, uh, superscript, this, this uh, sign for chemical potential. And then here, uh, instead of this P1, that is going to be simply one bar, okay? Or uh, simply uh, P of the standard state, okay? Now, something else that we can do is to say, well, this is going to be simply the chemical potential at a pressure that I'm interested in, mu sub j, whatever that pressure is, and this will be for component j in a mixture, and that is simply going to be the partial pressure of that component in the mixture. Okay, so what this is telling you is that the chemical potential of a component j, just the generic component in a mixture, is just going to depend on the partial pressure of that component on the mixture, and that's, that's going to be, uh, that, that makes perfect sense. And the dependence is like this, all right? So let me write this uh, down a little bit better. The chemical potential of a component J in a mixture is just the chemical potential of J, uh, the standard state. So you notice that we've moved to a mixture, so everything is for one component, plus RT natural log of P of J over P standard. Okay? So this is how the chemical potential uh, changes with pressure. And that is exactly what we're trying to do here, right? We're trying to see, or we, we have said that these partial molar quantities depend on concentration. For a gas, concentration is expressed in terms of partial pressure, or can be expressed in terms of partial pressure, and we've been able to then find out how the molar gives energy of a component, right? So the chemical potential depends on pressure. Okay, that's, so that's great. Now we're going to wrap up this video by uh, looking at how this, this expression looks like. Okay, so uh, notice that if your partial pressure uh, is larger than one bar, right, what you will find is that this ratio is larger than one. The natural log of a number larger than one is positive, and what that means is that your chemical potential at the pressure that you're working under is larger than the chemical potential at uh, the standard state, okay? All right, uh, or you can have that maybe the conditions that you're working under are such that the partial pressure of that gas in your mixture is less than one bar. Well, if you have a piece of J less than one bar, this ratio will be a number between zero and one, and the natural log of that number between zero and one will be negative, and what that means is that the chemical potential is going to be less than the chemical potential at the standard state. Okay? And of course, if your partial pressure is equal to one bar, then uh, this is zero, right? Because the natural log of one is zero, and then your chemical potential is just the chemical potential at the standard state. Okay? 
So another way to read this expression, and, and with that I'm going to finish this video, is to say the following. All right, the chemical potential of a gas in a mixer is going to be the chemical potential of the standard state plus a correction from the fact that you might not be at the standard state. If you have a higher pressure than that of the standard state, this correction is going to be positive and your chemical potential will be larger than that of the standard state. If your partial pressure is lower than uh, that of the standard state one bar, lower than one bar, then this correction will be negative and then your chemical potential will be lower than that uh, of the standard state. Okay, so uh, a lot of what we're going to be doing in the next few videos is going to uh, see how we can use this knowledge of how the chemical potential changes with concentration for gases and then try to apply it to liquids, which is something that is a little bit more complicated and we'll be uh, having to do quite a bit of work before we actually finally get to expressions that are suitable for the liquid phase as opposed to just yes, the gas phase.